a potential uh, tornado, potential spin up. So again, we're keeping a very close eye on these isolated tornadoes, which would mean that's actually kind of heading in our direction towards the station if we're talking just down Perkins Road. So again, that's a little bit further west. That's looking, uh, if we can, uh, just kind of look. We're going to do a little bit of scan with our tower cam out there. Uh, can our director pop it up? Let's see if I can pull up the, uh, our tower cam here for a second. And you can see that we're kind of watching multiple areas across the area, mainly that band driving in. But you can see that's kind of looking right now where the camera sits across Perkins Rail. You're looking towards the north east at this point. These isolated cells are kind of marching their way in from the southwest, but you can see we've got another little pocket off north of the area, kind of moving towards I-12 around the Shenandoah area, and then we're continuing to slide back. You can see the one right across the downtown area, and that's right across the river moving into the Port Allen area, kind of just where that water tower is. Um, if we continue to keep scanning a little bit further south, Ashley, and you'll see if we kind of see any uh, any funnel clouds, any low hanging clouds. Uh, right now I'm not seeing too much, at least looking southbound at this point. Uh, so you're talking heading directly towards the St. Gabriel area. But again, there is that potential that we could be kind of spawning up these isolated tornadoes. And it, there's our tower, obviously, so it's a little bit difficult to see uh, those uh, the clouds looking more so in that easterly direction. So um, kind of give you an eye, let's get back to uh, the big picture out here. And just to show you those isolated tornadoes, once again, you'll see big picture again. There are currently four tornado warnings in the area. And obviously, we may be seeing a lot more as we continue. Um, and you'll notice, again, you're looking, I'll get one right here. Back to the one in Ascension Parish near Gonzales. Tornado warning, about 215. And the areas that are inside of that cone are going to be the areas of Prairieville, Oak Hills, St. Gabriel, St. George, Inniswald, Old Jefferson, Shenandoah until about 215. So again, find that safe place. Immediately take cover now. Get to that interior room. If you live in a mobile home, find something that's a little bit more sturdy outside and be uh, well aware that we could have some heavy rain wrapped around these tornadoes, which means, again, they're not going to be very visible uh, to the human eye. The one a little bit further south, Ascension, Assumption, Iberville tornado warning until about 215. And as you see big picture here, White Castle, Bayou Soro, Plaquemine until about 210. Obviously, again, we're talking, again, that's the area that should be watching out for a potential tornado on the ground because it was just around Paincourtville where we did have a visible funnel cloud uh, again that was reported. So as you see Ascension, Assumption, Everville until about 215 that's for White Castle. Um, again did I click on the same one? Um, jumping back to uh, this one which is a little bit further east and you can see underneath that warning. Tornado warning, uh, the potential for some damage out there. Still, uh, a lot of these are Doppler indicated, but I still want to point there is that potential that we could be seeing some very strong storm storms. So again, right now, as of about five minutes ago, it was moving just past Convent and now about eight miles east of Napoleonville, moving northwest at about 55. So again, that does put the cities of Bell Rose, Donaldsonville, White Castle, and Carville kind of under the gun at this point. So if you live anywhere in that area, please take shelter immediately. And then the other one out there, well, it looks like we got a new one that just popped up a little bit further west at this point. It's continued. Oh, okay. They just continued that tornado warning out there. And you'll see, again, the key here with the tornado warning, they extended it now until 215. They have dropped a couple parishes, so now it's just Iberville Parish. So the areas that are currently, yeah, again, with this cell, there has been an observed tornado. No hail at this point, um, but an observed tornado on the ground, and it's heading directly towards Gross Tate, and it should be arriving there at about 220 to 225. So to repeat, there is a tornado on the ground. Take cover now. Move to an interior room on the lowest level of a very sturdy building. So um, I'm going to see here if we can pop up. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see if we can pop it up here. Just kind of keep an eye on some of those storm winds out there and you'll see what we're talking about. So it's a little bit south of Plaquemine and obviously 
This is kind of, we're in a bad spot for our Doppler radar sites because we're kind of where the two overlap, and that's kind of the issue out there. You really can't see these shallow little tornadoes kind of pop up. And I think the concern is now, again, you're talking just around LA 69 near the Lone Star area, around LA 404, heading towards the Bayou Sor Sorrel area. So you're talking around LA 3066, and then heading towards the Grand River area, towards the parks, and then eventually towards uh, the Gross Tate area, which you can see where 77 kind of crosses Interstate 10. So the area obviously is more in a path heading directly here. So we're kind of going in this general direction, starting out right about here, a little bit south of LA 77, and then driving up towards the Gross Tate and Rosedale area. And again, that's where there is an observed tornado currently on the ground at this point. Again, we'll jump back to that one and just kind of zoom out a little bit. And you can see here, um, did they, again, it looks like they just extended another uh, tornado warning now a little bit further south at this point. And again, what's the latest? Ascension, Assumption, Iberville, 215. Um, and again, hazard, a possible tornado. Doppler indicated nothing confirmed quite yet, but be well aware that there could be some flying debris in the area. So let's jump back to the other one. Again, the one in Iberville Parish is the one of greatest concern right now because, again, there is a tornado on the ground. It was spotted by a weather spotter, so it is confirmed. It was just around the Napoleonville area with this storm. Is it still on the ground? We're not quite sure yet. It's a little bit shallow. It's kind of hard to tell by Doppler radar right now, but it is near the White Castle area, and it's moving just about seven miles south of Plaquemine at about 55 miles per hour. So, again, Iberville Parish, if you live anywhere there, please, please, find that safe place immediately at this point. Um, and again, I repeat, this is going to be uh, pretty much an ongoing situation, obviously, as we continue to move forward. Again, you're going to continue to see these isolated tornadoes or tornadoes kind of spin up across the area. So again, do not wait. As soon as that warning pops, get to that safe area immediately. What else do we got going on here? Let's take a look back at the one just around I-10 between Ascension, East Baton Rouge, and Iberville, that tornado warning still for about another seven to eight minutes. And you see here, again, we're talking Prairieville, Oak Hills, St. Gabriel, Village St. George, and as well. And again, I keep focusing on that because it's higher population, obviously, so it could be affecting a lot more people moving into the capital area if there is a potential uh, tornado on the ground. Again, that one is Doppler indicated, nothing confirmed. Uh, also, the one across the river over in East Baton Rouge, Point Capi, and West Baton Rouge, that could also be a very dangerous storm. Right now, Doppler indicated tornado, nothing confirmed at this point, but we're, it's heading towards the areas of, again, just past Port Allen, and it's moving towards the Irwinville area and potentially could be passing Irwinville, heading up to maybe even um, False River area and a little bit south, south side of the lake uh, within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Again, because this cell, it's moving pretty quickly towards the north. Uh, again, what is it moving? At about 40 miles per hour, this individual cell is moving. So I also want to point out that we're going to be seeing some pretty heavy rainfall kind of moving in shortly too. You can see that heavy band sitting a little bit further south. And that's obviously going to be a concern for us as we continue to move forward. Notice also other feeder bands. Texas already starting to get an isolated tornado out there. Warnings are really starting to pop up. So um, again, this is where we need to start to be, again, pretty vigilant over the next few hours for these potential tornadoes. Again, with the potential for some very heavy rainfall as we continue to move forward. So, um, okay, let's get back to home here and kind of zoom out a little bit. And again, do we have any updates, Jasmine, as to... Okay. Um, all right. So it does look like they have canceled uh, the tornado warning for East Baton Rouge, uh, but that's mainly for the one on the west side of the Mississippi River. It's not for the one that's coming inbound from the southeast, and that's the one that's moving in from Ascension Parish, that individual cell. You can see it right here, this little pocket. They're concerned about moving across I-10 into areas just around the, maybe the Perkins Row area, just a little bit south of the 10-12 split. So again, that seems to be one of the bigger issues at this point, but obviously the one of utmost importance 
it's going to be that isolated tornado and you can see it right here and I'll get back to it. Yeah, we're talking this one right here because this is the one moving up towards the gross Tate area with a potential tornado. Well, again, we're not we're not sure if it's still on the ground, but there was a spotted tornado on the ground at one point as the system continues to track its way up towards the northwest at 40 miles per hour. So as you see here again, it's all about the potential for these isolated tornadoes that continue to spawn as we move into the afternoon and evening hours. And again, this is going to be a, an ongoing occurrence as we make our way into the evening hours. Because when you look at the big picture out here, you can still see that we've still got quite a few hours before Laura starts to make its way further inland. And again, I'm telling you, this is going to be a monstrous storm and potentially the strongest storm to ever hit the coastline of Louisiana by landfall. Again, we right now have winds sustained at about 140 miles per hour, and we're talking a very large wind field. So yeah, we may not get the brunt of the storm, but what we will get is still tropical storm force winds. You're seeing right now, we've been talking about these tornadoes spawning off those feeder bands, and that is currently happening as we speak. And also, what I do want to point out is the potential for flash flooding, because if we do get stuck underneath these bands, those rainfall rates are going to be very alarming. Let's see if I can jump to just to kind of show you that. And you're going to notice your precipitation rates right here. Again, you're talking already a couple inches in some of these pockets around Donaldsonville. It's really starting to come down. Again, we're talking blinding rainfall where you can barely see. So these trenchal pockets are just the beginning. At least a lot of this is kind of falling over the Atchafalaya Basin. So it can have a little bit of time to drain, but if we start to see more developing northbound, we're going to have to watch it on the north side of 12 as everything starts to filter into the Amy River Basin. Again, you got some new information? This thing's getting deeper now. So All right. All right, it looks like we got cells that are getting a little bit deeper out there. Uh, cores at about, again, what do we got, 20, 20 feet right now. Um, these rotating cells are small, weak, and fast moving. So again, we've got a couple spotter reports now. So they are confirmed. Okay, so apparently the National Weather Service is saying right now that they've got a couple confirmed reports out there from multiple spotters that these are actually happening, that there are these little isolated tornadoes kind of spawning up. Uh, across the area. So again, take it very seriously when you start seeing your area fall underneath one of these tornado warnings. So um, just kind of scan here. We got complete team coverage out there. And what do we have here? This is I-10 near Gross Tate. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the dark skies there. Um, we're also kind of looking in our general area. Um, we're also kind of doing the same thing. We're analyzing these storms um, and just seeing if we're seeing the same exact things. Um, you can see that one moving into the old Jefferson area. There's Village St. George right around Hope Villa. We're talking, you see right there, and you can talk. This is, again, all those areas that uh, kind of cross. There's Bluff Road right here, and that's right around Old Perkins Road, right around the Santa Maria uh, Golf Course, and then that's heading towards the Highland area, and then moving right down PQ, a little bit south of I-10. So, again, some pretty strong storms out there as we speak. And again, if I can pop up the velocity here, which kind of gives us an idea if there's any potential rotation. And some of these are starting to build a little bit. Looks like we may have another one. Just kind of seeing what we got here on the latest radar scan. Um, again, a lot of these are kind of somewhat shallow, but they are starting to deepen a little bit. And it looks like we may have even something kind of developing a little bit around LA. 697, which is on the western side of the Atchafalaya Basin. So, yeah, again, this is all currently for our viewing area. And let's take a look at the overall set again. Let's get back to, and you'll see here again. Let's uh, walk you through again. If you just tuned in, uh, I appreciate you tuning in because, again, these are but these are being confirmed tornadoes on the ground. Obviously, we may not be seeing the strongest tornadoes, but uh, we have some trusted uh, resources, some um, trained spotters uh, confirming these are tornadoes currently on the ground. So we'll step you through each one once again, and you'll see right here. You're talking the one right now, kind of moving along I-10 from Ascension to East Baton Rouge to Iberville, tornado warning until 215. And the areas right now that if you live anywhere from just before the 10-12 split, uh, mainly south of I-10 near the Perkins Row area, 
St. Gabriel, St. George, Prairieville, Sanima, uh, even the Shenandoah area, anywhere between there and Jones Creek, this is where you need to find that safe place immediately because there could be some flying debris, obviously, as those winds are really starting to pick up across the area. Uh, and if you do live in a mobile home, uh, it might be smart because to get through this storm, to find a safe location, something that's a little bit sturdier, obviously. Okay, it looks like they have dropped that tornado warning, which is great news for the capital area. However, again, 215, let's kind of zoom out a little bit and get the very latest. So they have dropped a bunch of those tornado warnings. Uh, you can see that they have issued another tornado warning, uh, again, just west of Lafayette, right around the Crawley area and right towards Iota. Um, looks like we've got a tornado warning for Irwinville, Morganza and Ravenswood now until about 245. So that is this cell that's moving currently across the river. You can see new roads, False River area, Melville. That's the area of utmost concern. So right around LA 413, heading really across uh, Highway 190. And that's uh, there's a lot of traffic that goes down 190. And if people are evacuating currently from the Lake Charles area, from the Lafayette area, Again, you got two routes coming through the Baton Rouge area. One is I-10 and the other one is Highway 190 out there. And you could be seeing, again, traffic heading eastbound. It's going to run through this cell of heavy rainfall on the way towards the capital area, heading eastbound possibly to the Hammond area, and then heading even further and further east as we speak. So I'm not even sure, too, if we can pop up some of the, uh, do we have anything on traffic cameras right now? Not seeing anything just yet. I am looking toward 190. Okay, we're trying to find a camera on 190 possible. I don't know if we have a camera that far west, uh, Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, all right, looks like they just issued a new tornado warning now for the capital area. And that is right over Village St. George. If you live in the Highland area, if you live in the Perkins area, if you live off uh, PQ, if you live just around Airline Highway, it's almost heading up Airline Highway. So right around that Klein uh, Peter Depot, uh, you can also talk about areas between there and um, Interstate 10 and Airline Highway. Uh, that is the area currently uh, of utmost concern right now. So we're talking around the Country Club. We're talking just around Santa Maria. Um, we're also talking... Mm -hmm. Let's see what else we got. Um, so heading towards the Tiger Bend area, uh, right around Antioch Road. Um, all kind of under the gun at this point. So... Uh, <laughs> yes, Jasmine, that's uh, right where you live. So, uh, again, uh, yeah, this is going to be possibly clipping anybody else. Let's see here again. This is radar indicated. Nothing confirmed for this new tornado warning, but they have for this individual cell right now, they have issued, and you're right now getting the emergency alert probably going off in your phone if you do live in the capital area at this point. Again, look for the possibility of some flying debris, Again, the damage to some roofs, some windows, vehicles, tree damage, likely. Again, we're talking Old Jefferson, Shenandoah, around 215, St. Gabriel, St. George, and as well, we're talking really over the next five to ten minutes, this system or this cell could be pushing through. Again, potential for some rotation right now, just moving along I-10 and really down Airline Highway. And right now, we're also trying to see if we can get some cameras out there. Hey, can you, uh, Director, can you pop up our traffic cameras at this point? and even our tower cam and you can see that heavy rainfall kind of moving into the area you can see right now again you can see right now that we've got heavy heavy rainfall blinding rainfall it's very hard to even see where that's pointing you're talking i-10 and segan you can see that the water is going directly across we're going left to right across the screen so we're talking blindfall um, again also from our view vantage point you can see our tower cam and this is currently what we've got going on obviously the roads and you can see there you can barely see visibility is extremely low at this point it's only extends just across uh, i believe that's the post office so you're looking southbound heading towards blue bond and if we can kind of turn the camera just a hair uh, towards the northeast a little bit closer pointing towards the i-10 area so on the other side of our tower cam just to see if we got any potential um, again, also, again, that's kind of getting very close to where our station currently sits at this point. 
And you can see how heavy that rainfall is. Obviously, we've got some cars on the roadway right now just around Perkins Road, but you can usually kind of see Interstate 10, those crosses just around uh, those churches, just around Segan from our tower cam. You can't see that at all. Uh, let's flip it back to the tower cam just around Segan, and you can see the trees. Can we, director, pop it back up and look at that? Okay, you're looking at the, uh, the traffic camera right now of I-10 and Segan. And you can see how those trees are starting to swirl on the bottom side of the screen. So uh, if you live, again, in the area, please take shelter immediately. So let's watch this very closely. And you can see, and it seems like rain right now is going sideways and torrential downpours, obviously. Um, again, probably at about an inch to two inches of rain per hour. And again, this is just one of the first feeder bands kind of driving through the area. Um, yeah, let's get back to the step it back to the Doppler radar out there and you can see just on the traffic cameras. And again, we're talking about that cell that's currently moving towards the 10 12 split. It's currently marching down I 10 and you're talking right now. The area of concern is from about Highland Road past Segan uh, right across the PQ area Segan between there and I 12 and you see it's actually just crossing Segan right now where that Walmart is just around uh, where the creek is, so you're talking Ward Creek right around the Mall Drive. There potentially, that seems to be the area of concern. And you can see how it kind of flashed a little bit. That means that it's actually intensity wise getting a little bit stronger. So um, yeah, we're talking, yeah, just around Perkins Road, just on the other side. We're talking the Michael Delvin area. We're talking the Potwin Drive area right across towards the Orleans Drive area. Uh, maybe even the potential for a maybe something just around the mall at this point. So, um, again, if you live anywhere within that area, please take shelter immediately. Um, and I do want to point out again because, uh, yeah, there are a lot of subdivisions within this area as it continues to march its way northbound. Um, and main thing is too, um, I texted my wife because again, I'm concerned too because it's heading pretty much towards our house. So uh, take, you know, shelter uh, immediately. So main thing is, um, again, when you're talking to these type of situations, again, these are, as you saw with the rainfall on our tower cams that you really couldn't see much at all. So um, they're rain wrapped, they're sometimes shallow, they pop up quickly, they snap trees and do damage very quickly across the capital area. All right, um, and as you see here, we're seeing around, hopefully maybe we can get some possible reports, see if we're getting any reports with traffic or anything like that. Um, I appreciate Landon coming in here to help out. Um, he's our producer and he's gonna kind of step us through trying to get new reports. If you guys at home have any reports, but please be safe, don't send us pictures, but if you, um, are hearing that normal sound that everybody typically, you know, kind of indicates as a possible tornado, that train sound, you know, the wind swirling, uh, let us know um, because that way, if you can kind of let us know where you are, we can kind of let other people's, other people down the road kind of in advance of the area know exactly what's kind of unfolding for them down the road. So, and as you see here, obviously, again, we're still underneath that tornado warning and that main cell is now just around the 10 12 split area. So it's now getting closer to the Essen area, the Blue Bond area. We've got all those hospitals right there. So again, a lot of traffic in that area. We're talking the Mall of Louisiana, and then it's moving across and potentially right towards the downtown area if there is a tornado. Again, I do want to point out that this right now is a Doppler indicated tornado as we speak. Okay, so. What I do want to point out is Doppler indicated nothing confirmed on the ground. And again, let's just go back to the basics here. We're talking now for East Baton Rouge and West Baton Rouge until about 245. So that still puts us kind of under the gun right now for about another 15, 20 minutes. And uh, again, the cities of greatest concern right now still remain Innisfil around 220. We're talking Gardeer area around 225, Westminster. Uh, same thing about 225, Port Allen, Marydell about 235, and then obviously the downtown area, uh, Baton Rouge at around 240. So that's when the rain's going to really start to pick up. The rain's going to start to, once you get past Gardeer, you're talking the LSU area, the lakes, you're talking downtown, um, and all those areas kind of in between. 
uh, right around all the parks right there, right around City Park. And uh, again, that's where the rain is really going to start to kind of pick up. So I do want to point also that we've also got a couple more isolated cells. Now again, developing a little bit further south. Nothing confirmed quite yet. Let's jump back to the one uh, across the river and you'll see this cell get the latest information on it, which involves the, city, or the parishes of Point Capi and West Baton Rouge. And uh, the areas that right now are uh, at least the cities that are of greatest concern. Again, now the population not as much because again, it's a little bit more rural out there, but we're still talking Irwinville, about 220 right now. It's time of arrival, new roads, Livonia about 235. So again, about 10 minutes. Um, and Fredosh and Morganza coming in at about 245. So if you haven't done so, if you're one of those cities, take shelter immediately. Find something that's a little bit sturdier. If you live out in the country, maybe find a gas station, something that's, uh, again, a lot of gas stations are built with concrete walls. And they all have also, um, which is good because they also have refrigeration areas and they also have storage areas that are kind of built up that are a little bit stronger, so some thicker walls. Um, I also do want to point out that all right, yeah, can we pull up uh, our tower cam? Can you flip it to uh, two, our max two? And if Ashley can go back, you can see that rain off in the distance. Uh, not necessarily seeing a funnel cloud, but you can see it does look like there's a nice rain shield out there. Uh, that rain is currently kind of coming down for areas. Again, that is now, we're looking towards the north yeah, we're to, uh, sorry, you're looking at the corner right down there, the road, that's Perkins and Blue Bonnet. So we're kind of looking towards the, around, or the downtown area. If the camera can swing just a little bit further north, and we'll see what's happening as that cell is kind of passing our station. All right. Um, uh, no visible uh, funnel clouds. So that's obviously good news for us. Uh, Ashley, picking up anything? You see anything out there? All right. All right. So that's good. Uh, no visible uh, funnel clouds out there right now, which is definitely uh, some very good news, even though, again, there is that potential warning on the ground. Doesn't mean that there isn't anything exactly out there. But again, um, at least visibility wise, it looks like uh, we're not confirming anything, at least from our tower can at this current second. So here we go. We're going to jump back out a little bit. And again, to kind of walk you through, really, the next wave that's still kind of driving through. You can see a heavy band of rainfall that extends from Opelousas now. And that goes all the way back down into areas uh, such as Homa and a little bit south of Lafitte out there. You're talking even the Donaldsonville area north of Morgan City. We're still seeing some pretty heavy rainfall kind of making its way northbound into the capital area. And again, that's where we can continue to see those isolated tornadoes spawn and potentially that's what you're going to see happen as we make our way into the evening hours. We've also got that tornado warning just a little bit past uh, Lafayette. Concern there is mainly because for outgoing traffic from the Lake Charles area, all traffic that's currently getting uh, fed down I-10 could be at least that cell is north of I-10 and moving towards the northwest. So we're talking just north of Welsh, north of Crawley and Jennings, north of Lake Arthur. So if people are starting to get out of town and starting to move away from the coastline, heading eastbound, they got to go through all this heavy rainfall. And you see right across here also some torrential rain from Hendersonville, past Gross Tate and all the way to the Rosedale area. Again, you're going to go through blinding rainfall. So if you know somebody that's currently driving, in that direction, if you've got family and friends coming in from the Lake Charles area, the Lafayette area, kind of give them a heads up and tell them to pay attention to the Doppler radar out there because, again, that rain is coming and it's going to continue to filter across the interstate. And you can see right here, all of this rain is going to start to move through. Let me put it in uh, motion here and you can kind of see how these individual storms are starting to kind of filter in. And you see, it's really just that leading edge where we're starting to see those isolated tornadoes. Couldn't eventually see... Let's, uh, I do want to back up here a little bit and keep an eye on this cell just around Sorrento, a little bit north of Lutcher at this point, right around uh, where, where again, uh, Highway 61 Airline Highway crosses Interstate 10. A new cell developing out there that could potentially be rotating, but you can see all those all that heavy rainfall kind of driving in again. And this is just the first band, obviously, uh, as we continue to move forward. So again, really a lot going to happen Again, this is just the first real wave. 
All right, what do we have here? Uh, taking a look at your traffic. Um, right now, traffic report, Burbank Drive between West Lee Drive and Ben-Hur Road right now is temporarily closed because of a fallen tree. All right, so we've got a fallen tree just along, where again is that uh, Burbank Drive between Lee Drive. So that's just, well, that's just outside the LSU campus right now. Um, where they put all those new uh, buildings out there. So there is a fallen tree right now across Burbank Drive, and it currently is closed because of that. So you're going to have to bypass the area and go back up to about Pekins and take Starring to get around it. So, again, just to let you know, big picture.